What's up guys, TechLab here, and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be a bit of a repair or a little bit of a mod, and it does come with a warning. No, seriously, we're going to be taking apart a power supply, and if you don't know how to handle these, you could be in for a nasty shock. Okay, so the reason for the warning is because not a lot of people actually know how to handle a power supply, particularly on the insides of them. Now, a power supply, and not going into too much detail, basically takes your AC power in, converts it to DC so that your computer can use it. Now during this process it does generate a lot of heat which is why you have a cooling fan in your power supply and it also stores a lot of energy inside the capacitors. So if you're inside one of these and it hasn't actually been drained and you touch the wrong thing you can be in for a nasty shock. Now that we've got the warning out of the way though, we're going to talk about what we're going to do. So this is a power supply that was recently donated to the channel to help us get our benching system up and running. It is a Cooler Master 1000 watt power supply and it is a little bit on the old side, but it's still got plenty of life left in it. Now the problem that we found when this actually turned up was that the power supply worked perfectly fine. It just had an issue with the fan in the fact that the fan wasn't spinning. Upon closer inspection, we could actually see a clip or a little connector for the fan was actually stuck in the blades and once we removed that the fan actually spun properly but the problem was that we kind of realized the bodge job somebody had done. It appears at some stage somebody had tried to change the fan in this unit and they didn't have one that actually matched the size so not only did they have to kind of 3d print some kind of bodge up and some glue to get it to work but they also did a bit of a DIY connection which wasn't very safe. So today we're going to actually take this apart and we're going to change the fan out and do a proper job of it. Now the first thing we need to do is obviously get a screwdriver and take the lid off this. This power supply has been drained so it should be perfectly safe but fortunately for us we're only changing the fan. We don't actually need to touch the dangerous bit anyway and we'll show you what that is once we get in there. What we need to do is remove the four screws from the corners and now they've been removed we just need to lift the lid kind of break it free I think it comes up from this side sometimes they can be a little bit tight but we break it up just like that and then we can simply lift it off and flip it over and we'll have a look at the mess that somebody made now when it comes to power supplies we just turn this around this way this is the really dangerous bit this is the bit with the fan in and all we need to do is unplug the fan which they've actually put a weird connection in that was the actual connection that they uh, somehow got under the fan and stuck into the blade so we'll undo that and then we'll move the dangerous bit to the side now if we take a look at the fan obviously this is not a cooler master fan it is a zalman so somebody's changed it at some point and i'll just take the fan out and we'll see, show you what they actually did to the corners simply just remove the screws from the fan and it will drop out into a big mess just like that we'll say pull the screws out and we'll put them to the side the fan grill we want to keep because obviously we want to put that back we don't want to be able to touch the fan by accident so we'll put them over there and then we have the fan itself now this is a 120 millimeter fan and what they'd done, because the actual unit is 140 millimeter, they 3D printed these little brackets that they glued then onto the fan and then they broke straight off as soon as we uh, undone it anyway. And then basically screwed straight through into these. Now, that's quite a novel and creative idea. It's a good way of expanding a fan, but that's not the worst thing that they actually did with this. I mean, that would survive and it kind of did, even though the fan was a little bit wobbly. But the worst thing was how they actually connected it to the board itself. Now inside this board, where the connection is that they used, where they actually connected this in here, where they converted the fan to just a two pin 12 volt, they actually didn't use a PHT connection. Now on the board here, there is a PHT connection straight on the board, but what they'd used was something like that. And this is actually like, um, like the pinouts that you use for the front panel of your computer. That will effectively work. It will go onto the pins itself, but nothing stops it from pulling out. So if at any point this gets jolted, it can actually come out. And that's probably what happened to this power supply to get the connector stuck in the fan in the first place. It was probably jolted in transit because I, I do believe it worked perfectly fine before. And somehow this jumped into the fan. So we're actually gonna get rid of that. We're gonna get rid of the fan. It's probably old anyway, it's really dusty. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now when changing the fan in a power supply, you could go for any fan pretty much as long as it's the right size that you want. We were gonna have a look at doing an RGB fan, 
but then we didn't feel that it was actually worth it. So we opted for one of our favorites, the Noctua Redux. Now this is a 1500 RPM PWM fan. And although we're not going to be using the PWM because it only has two connections, it's voltage controlled, it will work fine anyway. I've already started to model this up by cable tying some of the wires behind, but I love these fans, they're pretty decent, and I think it's going to look great in the unit. As well as the upgraded and new fan, we're going to be swapping out this dodgy little cable that they made, even though they did use a Noctua one, but it's a basically it's a four to two pin connection, so it's probably worth keeping for something else later on. We've actually created our own cable. Now this is a three pin, or it's a four pin PWM, but it's only got three pins in it. Um, connection that goes to a PHT connection. So it's actually going to clip into the board as it should have done when it was new. The reason that we've gone for a double instead of just putting the PHT onto the end of the fan is because if the power supply ever dies, we can actually reuse this fan, take it out and use it in something else. And these are not cheap. These were about £16 each and it's not worth throwing away really if anything goes wrong. But apart from that, now all we need to do is connect it up. Now to make sure the new fan does stay quiet, we're gonna actually be installing these little corners. They are anti-vibration mounts and they need to go on this side because that's the side that's gonna go up against the top. We just simply plug them in by squeezing them onto the side. We've done this a hundred times before on the channel, so I'm pretty sure you've seen this. And we do actually have a dedicated channel to install in these if you want to go and watch that. We'll link it at the end so you can go and double check. But we basically want to push these connections onto the corners and that'll stop any vibration from between the fan and the chassis and the framing. To double make sure that we're not actually going to get any vibration from it, we've actually got these little rubber mounts from Noctua, which are going to go through the actual casing itself and into the fan. They're actually a replacement for the screws, whereas the screws actually tighten everything down a little bit too much for my liking. I like to sometimes use these, and this is what we're going to use on this job. So all we need to do really is take the top and we want to put this in. It has got a Cooler Master logo on. I'm not really bothered which way it actually goes around. So we'll just drop that in there. And then we want to push these little pegs down, pop them through and just pull them on the other side. And this should hold everything into place. One, two, three. You can hear them pop and click once they get into place. There. And that's actually holding the grill in now. And if we turn it over, you can see all the little bubbles sticking out of the sides. Now, we want to make sure that when we put this on, it goes the right way around. I believe it actually goes on this way. So we will want our fan cable to pretty much be as close to the, uh, which is actually this side. We'll turn it around. So we want our fan connection as close to the uh, little PHT connection there. This will actually drop on that way, so we want to turn this over and we want to put our fan that way. Move that cable out of the way. And we just want to line up these. We're just going to line up these little bubbles to go through the fan holes. Now that we've got them through each of the holes, we're going to use a set of pliers just to pull them through and give them a bit of a tweak. Now they should pop through to the other fan side and then we can simply pop the little bubble up through the top and it'll come through there. So we'll do that on each of the corners and then the fan should be nice and secure. Right, now that we have all of the bubbles in place and they're a little bit tight because of the way that the fan actually is, it's not looking too bad. It's nice and secure all the way around. It's ready to stick it back onto the lid. First thing that we need to do is obviously plug in our little PHT connector. So we want to be careful with this one now, but it will only go in one way unlike the other one and we're going to use these little pliers here just to make sure that it's going to go in that way round that's now actually clipped in whereas the previous one wouldn't clip in it would just sat on top of the pins and we're ready to install the fan back in over the top so to do this we are obviously going to have to connect up our fan 
like that. And then lower everything back in and we're going to hide the wire in as much as we can down the bottom so it can't jump back up again. Drop this onto here. We want these wires to actually go into here. Bend that a little bit. Just into there like that. Make sure it doesn't come out. And then we'll drop the side down. Now the side should just tuck in to the bottom plate there. And then if we flip the other one over, we'll see that it's actually gone below the plastic. So we'll need to pop that back up, pop the plastic back in, and then do the same on this side. So drop that into there. Now everything is connected. We just need to drop the screws back into the chassis. And there we have it. We now have a PSU with a new fan that's actually connected using proper connections and proper terminals. So there's gonna be no issues there. It's going to bring a longer life to this power supply all over because obviously the 140 millimeter fan is gonna be able to not only move more air, but it's an Optura. So it's gonna last a lifetime anyway. And it's gonna keep everything lovely and cool. I think the gray as well of the Redux actually goes really nice with this power supply. It's a shame these little rubber mounts that they supply only seem to come in brown, the ones with the flat bottoms anyway. You can get black ones which have got a slight bubble on the end but that's no good when you're fitting this into a case but apart from that it looks pretty cool to be honest please make sure that you heed our warning at the beginning of this video that you shouldn't play inside a power supply unless you know exactly what you're doing or if you're qualified at doing it and please make sure if you are going to go inside the power supply that it is completely drained and you don't touch anything else apart from the fan housing itself let us know in the comments below what you think about the video and have you ever changed the fan in a PSU before? Did you ever go for an RGB thing? I know a few people that have actually done that and it looks pretty cool to be honest. It's a pretty cheap way of doing it, particularly if you can get the connections out the back and then you can make them programmable. That's pretty cool. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one.